Okay, in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make a procedural texture using 3ds Max and V-Ray. So here I just have some basic geometry with a few modifiers on it. And I want to create a material that procedurally um, gets applied across the surface. So first thing I'm going to do is go to my material editor. Right now I don't have a material on it. And I'm just going to make a default basic V-Ray material. So over here on the left, I'm in my sleep material editor, which you could change by your mode here. Um, I'm going to open up materials. I'm going to use a V-Ray material, and I'm going to use a standard V-Ray MTL, which looks like this. And so we can create a procedural texture by using different um, maps that are built into Max through these different outputs. So if you drag out of these, diffuse is going to be the color. So you can drag and go to standard or V-Ray, and these are all the different maps you can start using to generate the material. For this tutorial, I'm just going to use a falloff map, which is right here. And you can use any of these maps and see which ones work best for your geometry. When you double click on this, you'll see the, the settings over here on the right for this particular map. So the way the falloff map works is it basically has two colors. And you can also have two maps. So you could have a map instead of a color. And then it's going to uh, place anything that's perpendicular to the camera as this black material. Anything that's parallel is the white material, and then it'll create a gradient between those two materials. If you have two maps, it'll create a gradient between the two maps. So let's click, quickly see what happens when we change the color here. So I'll make the first color this uh, bright purple, and then I'll make the second color um, a bright green, so we can see it a little better. If I double click on that, you can see what it's doing to the material. And then we'll go ahead and apply that to our form. Um, you can double click and turn it on, but you're not going to be able to see these fall off maps uh, on the form, unfortunately. Okay, so let's just render that real quick, see what that looks like. You can see it's basically like wherever the surface starts to become really perpendicular, it's going to have that green, and everywhere else it's going to have that purple. And now we can start building a little more complexity into this material. So let me expand this out here a little bit. So now, instead of using just the colors, I can start adding additional maps that are also procedural maps. So if I just replace the pink here, I can just drag out of map 1 and go to my standard maps and use any of these maps. So I'll go ahead and use this noise map. And the noise map is similar to the falloff, but it basically, uh, instead of creating a perpendicular and parallel um, gradient between two colors, it creates a noise pattern on that particular color. So we replace the pink color. So if I double click on this, that's what we're going to replace with noise. So noise also uses two colors. So I can change these colors. Let's go ahead and add a pink again. And then instead of white, let's go ahead and add a bright blue to that. And you can see it's a mixture of those two colors where it was once pink. You can also change these other settings. Like if you make it a fractal, it's a little sharper, a little crisper uh, of the color transition. You could also change the size. So I could do you know, like 10, and you can see it gets a little more pixelated. Um, and you can also try these other values too. So if you want less pink, you can reduce this value, and it'll be more blue, and vice versa. So if you increase the low, it'll change the blue ratio as well. So we could go a little further with this. Let's say we go back to our falloff map. Um, we could add another bitmap, so, or another procedural map. So in this case, maybe let's use the uh, checker, so we can really see what happens there. And if I double click the checkers, like the other two, uses a black and white. In this case, let's use like a real dark red. And then we can use, uh, you know, bright yellow for this one. Um, it doesn't always show up exactly what it's going to do on the material, so it's really useful just to render it uh, and get a good sense. So let's just render this real quick. You can start seeing it show up. You can kind of get the checker pattern, uh, but mostly you can start seeing that noise map there. Let me reduce my lighting. It's a little too bright right now, so I'll change that as well. So to change my lighting, I just realized I had a, a target direct, so I'm just going to select that and delete that, and then go ahead and re-render. <clears throat> now my color looks quite a bit better. So you can see the yellow there, the blue, and then the pixelation. That's not all we can do with this. Um, if we open up our material editor again, we can also start to replace these other maps here. So for example, if I want to create some opacity, like a perforation in the object, I can use additional maps to create that. So let's go ahead and use a, a cellular pattern here. And you can see immediately it becomes perforated. So if I double click on this, any of these other maps, you don't need to worry about color. You just need to worry about a grayscale from white to black. Black being, for example, an opacity, totally opaque. White being totally transparent. And gray being some value in between. So for example, 
Um, if I want to change any of these, I could make this a little gray so it's not totally transparent. And you can also change the tiling. <clears throat> also, if you go down a little bit, you can change the type of, of uh, cellular characteristics. So you can double click on this to see what's happening. If I change it to fractal, it becomes a little different. I can um, also increase the size of these. So if I make it 20, it's going to be quite a bit bigger. And you can see how that affects the um, transparency of this. So let's go ahead and render that again. Okay, you can see that it's rendered. And so in the final rendering, you get some of that cellular perforation pattern. You also get the fall-off map and then the, the three colors that are happening through the layering of these different procedural maps. You could also, if you wanted to, uh, start doing other kind of maps. So you could add reflectivity or all these other kind of procedural maps to the different channels in the material editor. So for example, if you start adding different maps in here, you can change reflectivity, you could add some bump map, um, or you could add things like uh, displacement <clears throat> or highlight glossiness.